This is Natalie of the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche bringing you another video. This one will be educational, will be whips, will show whips, excuse me, will uh, show some new finds and some old finds. I'll show you the finishes. Did I say that already? Well, the finishes I showed you before, but who knows how many people actually saw them and we'll get that out of the way. And then I have a really big problem. My problem is that I have too many samplers and not enough time to stitch. I'd like to get your input to know which one do you think I should stitch? Which one should I toss? What should I sell? Um, I just need help. What am I going to do? So much beauty and so little time. So I'm going to go through some of these samplers and you can help me go and, and educate me on what to do, how to decrease my stash and make things less overwhelming. With that said, I am on a sampler diet. No more samplers. I don't care how beautiful they are, how exclusive they are, what charity they support. Nada. None. Not happening. Let's get that out of the way. Okay. First, let me show you the, uh, my latest finishes, and uh, you'll have to forgive me because I, I have shown these before, but I wasn't sure how many people watched my last video. This is Annie Morris, a very small sampler with really pretty colors, right? I'm going to hold this up so you can see the colors. Real pretty, and this is on 45 or 46 count in Exude Designs linen with the called four colors. That's going to be sent off to be framed because I like my samplers framed. And of course, the beautiful Sarah Milne. And I still haven't figured out, I think it's needle and flax linen, but I haven't figured out which one. And this needs to be sent off. And this was in the original, the original colors. Uh, it's in Auversois. And this is 40 count. So this is how big it'll be on 40 count. It's going to take you a while to stitch. Okay. So I did show these before, but again, um, how many people actually watched my last video? I don't know. <laughs> they might have turned it off after about a minute. Who knows? <sighs> Next. Should I show you what I got? My new sampler? Yeah, why not? I said I wasn't getting any more samplers, but this is the last one, I promise. This is the Benitez, Benitez, Benizet, the Benizet, the Benizet Alphabet Sampler by Cross Stitch Antiques. And it's not very big, it's 130 by 155. Okay? It doesn't have a lot of colors. It has one, how many colors does it have? Um, blah, blah, blah. Does it give a color thing? Interesting. I'm not sure. Oh, oh, here you go. One, two, three, four, five. It has like five or six colors, five colors. That's it. This was Kathleen Littleton's, one of her. Uh, 2024 Nashville Nashville releases. I, I did buy this uh, for a few reasons. One is I really liked it. And it came with a DMC. I usually use overdyed colors or silk on my samplers, but the DMC colors are awfully pretty and uh, nothing wrong with DMC. And it also came with this 40 count mason linen medium dark button box and she even writes how big the linen is and how big the margins are so she puts clearly on there three inch margins um uh, fantastic everybody anybody who sells linen designed for pieces or kits please do that please do that Say how big a margin is, so because otherwise you don't know. 
And um, this is the medium dark antique button box. Is it antique? Mason linen medium dark button box. No, medium dark button box. And this is the, the, the floss against it. Okay. That, that's going to be stunning, really. So I am going to use the DMC. I'm going to have to put these on some sort of uh, bobbins, but because I get annoyed cutting it off from DMC. But uh, I bought this specifically for my trip. I am going on a two-week cruise, uh, which starts out in Iceland, goes to Norway. Uh, it, got, it has three places in Iceland, three places in Norway, Brussels, Belgium, Amsterdam, and then it goes to Southampton, England. And I'm going to Reykjavik, well, the capital, I'm going there two days ahead, and I'm staying two weeks, two weeks, two days after. So it's a two-week block trip. So this is the perfect size sampler for that trip, and I can bring a hoop. And uh, I, it, it's very convenient to stitch in a hoop when you're traveling rather than being, bring a frame. Uh, amazing to do that. But this is such an interesting sampler. The letters are all cross stitch, even though they have a, a like an interesting look to them. They're not anything but cross stitch. It's almost all cross stitch. There is a small amount of satin stitch, and uh, you can tell where it is. The satin stitch is just on the tooth, the sawtooth. Uh, and it's very doable. It does have a border. Uh, looks like the border is three sides one, one side the other. Um, little, very easy border small little thing and I can't wait to stitch this now if you want one of these I will tell you straight out if anybody says I don't like online shopping they don't know what they're talking about because I support both shops and online this is 2024 come on guys and this is to be found on the cross stitch antiques website she sells little known otherwise they'd all be gone she sells some of her charts kitted up, not all. And when they're gone, they're gone. I do not even know if there's another one of these left. It's possible there was only one, but I know she has some others on there. I was super tempted to buy another one kitted up like this, but I didn't. Wonderful, perfectly cut linen, gives you exactly on the linen, what count it is, what name it is gives you the margins that are meant for that piece that she cut, gives you uh, some of the called for floss. And this floss uh, had a choice of, just to let you know, DMC, NPI, or 100.3. She actually charted it for. And um, unfortunately, she didn't have the NPI. I wish she did. But um, this is the way it came. Some of her other kits do have combinations of different linens and flosses and you get what you get but this is for this is my Iceland sampler would have been kind of cool if I actually was going to Ireland but we're not so I don't know I might think about it and see if I can find an Iceland or a Norwegian sampler to stitch or hmm, we're taking that so I have another finish I, I did not show you. Uh, I purchased this little frame in a thrift store. I think it was 25 cents, right? Little gold, golden frame. And I stitched this little freebie. This is from uh, Liz Matthews to put in the frame. Let's see. Um, my issue with it now is I shouldn't have stitched it on white linen. I just stitched it on the scrap. And I don't know if I like how it looks. Now, this is easily fixed. Easily fixed. I'm going to dip this in some coffee. Yes, it's going to slightly dye your, your threads, but it will mostly dye your linen. So as soon as I dip it in coffee, it'll make this uh, linen into a uh, much little browner linen. And it will go very cute in here, this little mistletoe. I wasn't crazy, actually, about how this came out. Um, I don't like, 
I don't like, uh, you know, whatever you call it, a straight stitch. I don't like it like in on top of my linen, but really there was no other way. So this is pretty much stitched from my stash and then I, uh, more to come on this one. Uh, my whip, of course, is an oldie but a goodie. Jesus wept. Uh, this is a 1995 release from the Scarlet Letter. I am stitching it on uh, over one on 37 count Russian tea cake from Legacy. Here's what I've done. Not close enough. Okay, pretty right. And um, here is the model. I really could not find a good model of this. Just couldn't. Okay, so I don't know what to do with, uh, I, I, I do know what to do. I'm going to finish it. I am probably not going to do the back part. I'm just going to do the front part, but um, I've never stitched a sampler over one, and this is relatively simple. If you, here's a education. If you buy 25 count linen or 28 count linen, you can easily see the holes and stitch over one. Uh, I'm doing this on 37. I have the ability to do that. I would not do over one on, let's say, 46 count, 45 count, way, way too annoying for me. Uh, I know there are people who do it, and one of the people I've seen do that is Jean Lee. And sometimes she doesn't do the full cross, she does the continental stitch where you just do one, one, one. And when it's on such tiny count linen, it looks like full cross. But uh, of course you can experiment with that, but I have seen her do that. I saw her show it on the attic video. So Jesus wept. Um, it's not very big. I am about, let's see how much done with it. If I was to divide this, I'm about one, a little more than, let's see, if I was to divide this, let's see, one, two, three, I am about one fifth done. So about 20% done with this, I would say. And it's going relatively fast. I only stitch an hour or two every night. Some nights, no, but for the most part, an hour or two every night. Uh, just to show you the beautiful floss. Beautiful, right? Beautiful colors. And I think I showed this before. I added red just because the white does not show up at all on there. I looked at the model closely or as closely as I could and the white doesn't show up in the model either. My feeling is that's probably what the original looked like. I would love to find the original photo. If anybody knows where I can find that, let me know. Um, I'm going to contact Scarlet Letter and I, I don't recall her name, but I'm going and see if she has it. Uh, chances are she probably doesn't, but it would be great. It would be great to do that. Next, I put everything out. A gift from my friend Mary. This bookmark. Fabulous, right? And the way this bookmark works is like that. Looks like she embroidered this, right? Looks like she stitched it. She did not. This is a piece of fabric from one of the Nicola Parkman oops, towels. I have a bunch of these. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, what they look like and also see if I can find the exact towel, which I have no idea. So... That's one, and I don't see a cat. But a lot of people have used this as fabric because it's thick and it's gorgeous. Let's see, is it on this one? I highly doubt it. Is this upside down? No. Okay, but these are what the towels look like after they're out of the package. I know Nicola Parkman has showed them, but I haven't. Um, another one. And, and 
another one. You see a cat on there? I don't. No cat. Okay. Let's fold this. These just are fantastic. Oh, another one. Right? Um, no cat. <laughs> this is pretty incredible sample considering the girl that stitched this was 15. Uh, this is Anne Tong Uffendel. This is a really popular sampler, and I don't see it on here. Okay. And the last one. Let's see, I don't see it on here either, so I'm not sure where that's from. Okay. Oh, wait, here it is. Here it is, of course, on the last one. Okay, can you see it? Oop. Let's get this better. Let's fold this here. Here's the fabric. And here's what the cartonage, what Mary did. Absolutely amazing. Uh, she put these towels to use. Um, they're great. I don't think they're great towel, kitchen towels, and I'll tell you why. Um, the only reason is they're really not very, um, I like linen towels and I like uh, cotton loop towels that are like super soft and absorbent, and these really aren't. Um, these are more show towels, and I love show towels too, but um, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I'm thinking if I have some finishes, maybe I will also use the, use the fabric because the fabric is fantastic. So that's one thing. Along the same genre, I don't think I ever showed you, or maybe I did, um, this is from Harriet Salt, and this is not, wasn't a show towel, it was some of Nicholas Fabric. And uh, on an exchange, somebody made me this needle book, which is absolutely gorgeous. I might take this on my trip with me to store my needles. It's compact, it can store needles. It, can, it has a needle minder in it, which uh, is kind of nice. And uh, I probably can stuff a pair of scissors in here somewhere. Um, is there a pocket? Yes, there is. There's a pocket so I can put a pair of scissors. So fantastic, fantastic job. Okay. So people are using Nicola Parkman's fabric for various things. I've seen a number of, uh, bags made out of it, project bags. So some educational stuff. I'm going to show you some various reds. Okay. All different Aversois reds. 100.3. Okay. Oh, and by the way, this is not stitched in 100.3 over 1. It would have been stitched in Soie Surfine, which is finer than 100.3. And this, uh, if you're going to stitch it, and this, I, uh, it came kitted, and I'm stitching it with a Gloriana uh, Tudor Silk, okay, which is very thin. So this is actually a little thick for that, just to let you know. Okay. Um, here's some good examples of other reds. This one is Schoolhouse and this one's Liberty. Just to show you how many reds there are, right? Okay. This is made by, um, who the heck made this? Oh goodness gracious, it's on the tip of my tongue. This silk, oh, Vicki Clayton, Vicki Clayton red, a variegated red, it's gorgeous, beautiful. 
I mean, look at the color. It's very rich and variegated. The price is good on it too. And finally, this is an antique red. Nothing that says, you. it says embroidery silk. And it came on these little spools. Um, these little spools, let's see if I can get one that's already been started. Not by me, it came like this, but here, looks like there's a... Um, these little spools have two. They're two-stranded, okay? And if you see these, these little spools, they're, two, they're ten, uh, three yards of two-stranded silk, uh, as opposed to uh, a versoie, which is 50 yards of one-stranded silk. You do, or uh, you, let's see, I mean 100.3. A versoie is, let's see if I can find one. I may have to get up. Here you go. Here's a regular versoie, which is Soie de Alger, which is five meters. And how many strands in here? Let's see how many strands. And there's a lot of strands in here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. It looks like six strands. So, uh, you know, you have to do the math when you when you calculate things. How much silk are you usual are you getting? Okay, so if this, let's say this is six times five, that's actually 30 meters. And this is, let's see, this is 50 times one. Is it six? 300 meters. Excuse me, five times six. Hold on. Is it six? <laughs> Live video, guys. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, it's eight. I can count. One, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven. It looks like eight. Okay, so eight, five times eight, right? So that's 450. And this, uh, this actually, or 45, 45, and this is 50. So these are about equivalent. Man. What the heck? And then something like this, um, I don't know, this is probably five yards. And uh, so, you know, the price actually you have to, you have to look at and you have to calculate. So let's say five yards and how many strands here and meters and yards are pretty close, but not. And um, this is, six strands something like that okay so you're getting 30 yards here so you gotta you gotta go through it and you gotta do the math because silk sometimes is actually cheaper cheaper than uh than variegated floss believe it or not depending on what brand how big a skein and so forth this stuff uh you're not getting much because you're getting three yards and uh, there's only two strands so you're getting six yards. So this is a little more expensive, but then again, you get to keep these beautiful little spools and use them. This was a great find. I mean, I think I paid, I don't remember what I paid for this, maybe 30 bucks, something like that. But I, the box was fantastic. And after these are done, you can reload them or you can, these actually will fit a spool in there. <laughs> so you could actually put a whole thing of spools for your Always thinking outside the box, but always like in the back of your head when you're calculating, look and see how many yards or meters and how many strands, and you can convert meters to yards using online calculators very easily. And then you will say, it cost me X dollars for to use this brand, X dollars for that brand, X dollars for that. Cheapest is always going to be DMC. Cosmo is up there as well. And Cosmo is beautiful floss. Cosmo is made in, made in Japan, and actually, it's uh, I sort of like it better than DMC. I think it's softer, but my bot, that's only my opinion. So, a little more about scissors. Um, this is a very old Wasa scissor. It came in a little box. And the box, um, I think, which led me to believe it probably was some sort of gift pack. 
But these Wasa scissors are actually beautiful. They're old. They came in a box, and I think they looked unused. They really did. I mean, everything about this. And these are much nicer than a than newer pair I have. Just to let you know, these older pair, like everything else, were definitely made with more care. So uh, these Wasa Solingen Germany older scissors. They're heavier. They're heavier. They came in a little plastic box, but um, I really do like them better. I think that the Wasa scissors that are uh, the same ones that are newer are lighter weight. Nothing wrong with that, but I definitely think these are uh, pointier and sharper and just they seem more high end. So if you do see these, buy them. And this box is a, is a pain. It's hard to open. But yeah, it came with the little label. And uh, I don't know when these were made. And of course it came with a little thimble, which I'll never use, but really beautiful. I've had those a while. I just wanted to show you something that was old versus new. Uh, these are made in France. Okay, these are marked France. Bowen sells a very similar scissor. These are really nice. These actually came sharp and they're fairly tight. And these were cheap, they're like seven bucks. I took a chance, but I thought they were super cool. The green. Um, always look and see, do your tips meet? The tips don't meet, avoid them, in my opinion. Um, this is a good example of a good quality uh, antique scissor, again, um, to look and see, do the tips meet? Perfectly. And then if you want, you can cut at the tip. Cuts perfect. Cut at the body. Okay. These are sharp. These are sharp. And these, uh, they cut at the tip and the body. Uh, I don't think they're marked, actually. They're unmarked, but who knows who made them, but they've got mother of pearl on them. And uh, they don't make stuff like this anymore. These are these were quite a good buy. Don't, don't think I've never bought anything bad. I have. I have another scissor from the French Needle. Nogent. Let me take this, this off. I'm going to take this tag off. There's no reason to have it on there. But uh, it was her last pair. I took a chance because I love the other Nogent ones I, I did receive. And uh, very nice. Uh, looking at these now, I did recommend Nogent, and apparently two different two people told me that they had imperfect scissors. I guess it was hit or mess because mine were good. More to say about Nogent. Um, I have two different scissors that were made in Nogent. One was advertised as finished by uh, Jean Rouleau. The other was not, but they're both marked, uh, was not advertised this way, but uh, apparently that was uh, his place, okay? And these are both the same manufacturer, all right? And the feel, I like these better. Um, these are a finer point in my in my opinion, just the feel. Although they're both beautiful, and these are clearly perfect. Okay, the tips meet. They're sharp. I mean, they're really beautiful. I showed you these, but I did not show you these. Pretty much, this is going to be it. You're not going to be able to find these again, in my opinion, or it's going to be hard. And. Um, I really love a good scissor. These are marked, uh, they have 24 on them. That must be the size, and these are, or 66, so it must be the model number. But uh, just uh, gorgeous. Somebody noted that the Nogent scissors, the handmade ones, have his initials, okay? Not the Nogent, excuse me, the Rouleau scissors, the handmade ones, have his initials, and they do, so these are not handmade scissors other than they're hand finished, which mean a machine made the part and he put them together. Is that a 
hand making the parts. So they are, um, his hand was involved in these and they're beautiful. Um, and I'm sorry some people got ones that they didn't like, but I got ones that were fabulous. So I got that little one that was just, oh, so darn. Okay. Another thing I took a chance on were these, these very nice um, scissor fobs. So this one is the depiction of, a, of the Betsy Ross stamp. That's really cool. And this is uh, some sort of piece of a sampler and I have no idea where it's from. Um, I can't read it, there's no name on here. Okay, so um, my only, my issue was, do you need permission to use? Well, I, I, can't, I can't find a sampler that kind of looks like this, that probably is out there and she uh, she obviously borrowed it. Is that okay? Yeah, she's not using it as a sampler. She's just using some somebody's antique work, which really isn't copyrighted unless somebody specifically does something, um, and even then. So, no, I think it's okay. And this, uh, this is an out of circulation stamp, um, or it's the real deal. I don't know, it looks like a stamp inside, actually. Can you see that? I gotta ask her because the, there's uh, actually little perforations. So um, now that I look at it, it probably is the actual stamp. I love them, they're great. My only issues are a little heavy. Somebody told me that they're supposed to be heavy, um, but they're beautiful. I suppose you can use them as zipper pulls, maybe cut them down or use them as a zipper pull or whatever you want. Um, they're, they're truly outstanding, I really love them. And finally, um, just to show you, there are bargains out there. These are the Bowen cat scissors. Okay. And um, they're clearly not handmade scissors, but uh, I don't know if they're made in France or marked Bowen, but they're not, I don't see anything that says they're not made in France. And it says Bowen France. Totally a machine made factory scissor, which I don't know, I guess somebody has to put them together. But for the price, I think these are like five, six, seven bucks. They're great. They're beautiful. You can take them with you, not worry about losing them. And they're nice. So Bowen scissors are actually uh, pretty much a bargain. And of course, I'm putting some things in this really pretty container. No reason you can't have beautiful things, make them ut utilitarian things and make them into cross stitchy things. So I'm at 33 minutes. So the good news about using your phone is that it gives you a time. Now you can shut this off or you can help me. We're gonna go through, it's probably gonna take about a half hour. We're gonna go through all of these, uh, all of these these samplers and you're going to help me pick what to keep and what not to keep. Now, I guess it's more than I think. I don't know. You'll have to count them. But this does not include some, a few that I have as whips that I just haven't finished that uh, eventually I will. I mean, this was a whip for like from five years ago that I finished. So, all right, let's go. So this is the 1776 uh, sewing roll from uh, it's Winterthur, from the Exemplary. Okay, I put this in the uh, in the sampler thing because it uh, is a sampler, and uh, look how nice that box is. Fabulous, right? Comes with just about everything you need. Fairly big piece of uh, stiff linen. Uh, does it say what it is? I don't know. Use two strands. Two strands. It's got not that much stitching, but lots of uh, instructions on how to make your sewing roll. This would also be a good traveler uh, because it's not big and it's uh, doable, although I like keeping this in the box and the box is not good for travel. Next. So this is going to be old and new. 
<sighs> Martha Walmsley. An exclusive from Hobby House. I've seen a bunch of people finish this. Magnificent, right? Uh, the fabric, I'm not crazy about. Too blotchy for my taste. Um, so I can easily substitute the fabric. Uh, this is the call for fabric. I guess it is. And a lot of people have put it on here. But I love fabric that's hand dyed. I'm not crazy about like sort of big blotches, except for if it's a Halloween piece where you really want that look. But I think samplers should be a little more uniform. My opinion, no one else's, my opinion. Although I did hear Nicola Parkman say the same thing recently. And uh, delicious, right? So this is high on my to-do list. Let's go through this. Lizabetha's Liza Betha's, Liza Betha's marking sampler. This is not kitted up. Love the space. Love the free open spaces. Uh, stitch count is 215 by 167, but it's not all stitched. Uh, very doable, no border, and only four colors. Lucy Owen. Uh, by the Scarlet House. Uh, I do not think this is a reproduction sampler, although I don't know. I just put it in with my samplers. Token of Friendship by the Scarlet Letter. Uh, this is not for the faint of heart because it's a lot of uh, fairly uh, solid areas, but it's not that big. It's 177 by 204. Okay, I've seen people do that. So these are not that old. This is Kind and True by Pineberry Lane. Um, okay. Came kitted up. Now, um, this might go in my to sell one only because, or it might go in my uh, giveaway one because this is awfully nice. And the reason being that um, I'm not a big fan of Adam and Eve samplers. A ton of people love them and I love Bible quotes. Just, I don't know, Adam and Eve is not my favorite thing. Um, maybe it, uh, especially this has got the, as you can see, it's got the little uh, snake and the apple. <laughs> I don't know. But um, I'm already thinking that that one I'm not going to stitch, although I love it. Um, this is the Brown House Sampler, which is an old, old sample by Deanna Jones. Um, nothing wrong with old, and what I love about this is that it's quite small. It's really small. Um, we've got Emily Wildhack. I've seen this done. Uh, very pretty, right? And uh, let's look at the size, blah, 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 it does not say. Oh, 165 by 253, so it's a lot bigger than you think. Very pretty band sampler. Okay. Uh, this is an actual whip. Why did I put it down? Oh, I could tell you why I put it down. Because I did it on uneven weave cloth. Okay, and it, 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 it's hard on uneven weave, and that's some of the darning part, and I just put it down, but it is a whip. Um, I didn't tell you what this is, did I? Sorry for the crinkles, and... Um, Apparently there's just a picture in here and no name. Why is that? Um, this is by eSampler and uh, ECG. Okay, it's a darning sampler. It's lovely and uh, it came with fabric and for whatever reason I chose to do it on a fabric that wasn't an even weave, which was a, a mistake for this particular one, because 
the darning stitches can be tricky. Okay. Uh, the multiplication sampler by Eileen Bennett. This is really pretty. Isn't that pretty? Okay. Um, as you can see, it was $5, so this is how old it must be. <laughs> how many things are $5 now? Eileen Bennett, oh, 1988. Okay. And um, it's 173 by 150. And I like the little, like the little blotches there. So uh, this is the Appleseed Prim, the Belinda Coffin Sampler. I'm probably not going to do it only because it's very washed out for me. Although that's the original sampler colors. And this is a kit. So I may put that on the sale pile. This is already happening, but... This one is Handwork Eliza Hills. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that pretty? I've seen this done. The Attic had it done and showed it in one of their videos. I have all the call for DMC. And this is interesting fabric. Um, I made this fabric. This fabric is very close to the fabric that the Attic actually did it on. And yes, it's got some blotches, but areas are very uniformly blotchy. This was blue linen that I coffee dyed and then baked actually a little bit just to get a blotchy, yes. But, and yes, you're looking at this and you're saying, are you kidding? No, the attic did this on this kind of color, which is not available anymore, and I duplicated the color. Um, I don't even know what, what count this is. It sort of looks like 32 count maybe. Um, it's not very big. 152 by 160 and uh, I, when I've seen this done it's a, it's a fabulous sampler definitely stays in the pile um, this is threads of gold uh, 1724 mh this is not for the faint of heart it's not a huge sampler okay on 25 count it only measured 14 by 7 but look at all the stitching Still magnificent. This is the kind of thing I would do one piece a month. You can even substitute quite a few. And um, have I seen this done? I don't know, but this is just so pretty. Um, sorry about that. I had to open. Still has the threads of gold scissor. Uh, stitches used are cross stitch, reversible cross stitch. Oh gee, upright cross stitch, satin stitch, Irish stitch. 10 stitch, Algerian eye, diamond eyelet, queen stitch, and rice stitch. This is when I want to do something that's torturous. Okay. Next. Oh, on Easter Day. Uh, this is magnificent. There's a lot of open space. Just a beauty. The attic has this hanging on their wall. At least they did. Um, from Samplers Remember, and it's 227 by 303, but I'm not afraid of that because there's quite a bit of open space in here. I absolutely would want to do this in a higher count. Um, Emma Rake on Easter Day, okay? As we go through this, this is the Knox Family Sampler, which I really want to do. My my stepdaughter, who I'm going to call my daughter Jennifer, uh, her husband's name is Mason Knox. So she is now Jennifer Knox. And I wanted to do this for their house. The Knox family sampler. Okay, isn't that awesome? Uh, Mason, I'm proud to say, is in the Coast Guard. He's stationed up at the joint base up in Cape Cod, which I, we were able to visit in December. We were there for Christmas. And uh, they have a beautiful baby. Baby's name is Beckett. Beckett Knox. Mm. Well, I'm hoping to do this for them. Samplers worked on 35 count uh, linen. The finished size is 14 by 17. Not bad. 
don't know if I'm ever going to get through this. This is Threads of Gold, Jeanette Duncan Gosman. Uh, a small sampler, something I really liked about it. I really did like this. Sometimes these older pictures don't do them justice. And um, it's 185 by 164, which is not huge. Doesn't have a tremendous amount of silk in it either. Uh, the E sampler, um, here you go. I found the piece. I was hanging out outside the, the thing, I don't know, but this was the, the EGS Dorning sampler that I had put down. And I put it down because um, my own fault. <laughs> and then, of course, you've got heart string, strand, heart string samplery. These are all small samplers. Um, yeah, we'll go through this. Esther Connington. We'll go through this rather quickly. Uh, Anne Whitaker. I have a love for small samplers. And uh, these are awesome. This one is um, something Selic, EA Selic. Not sure if that's a piece of a bigger sampler or if it stood on its own. Probably in the explanation. Uh, Ann Dexter. Okay. Nice colors in Ann Dexter. And they're all like 100 over something. They're really small. This is the Spies of Canaan. So these are all little itty bitty samplers. This whole booklet was 30 bucks, which is a bargain. Think about all the stuff you get. And then this is the Old Rose Pin Keeps. Okay, so you get a lot in this book. This is uh, the Pencil uh, Pennsylvania Alphabet Sampler by A Good Huswife. Nothing not to like. I'm going to flash the back at you, which is okay. You can't really see it. Those are the colors. I think they're a little drab, so I'm going to just put some brighter. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, Hester's Needle, this is Farewell My Friend Sampler. I thought that the border's fantastic. Look. Okay, it's not, you're right, it's all the same thing, but the, the, it just a really cool look to it. And then of course, this is Cardan, the Darning Sampler, and I've always wanted to do the Darning Sampler, and this is a small sampler. Beautiful, right? Barrick samplers. This is the multiplication table. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do this one. I've seen it done. But it's quite beautiful. Might go on my... I know there's some people looking for it. Handwork, the Ann Eliza Wilbur Prentice sampler. Thought this was... This is from the DAR Museum. Daughters of American Revolution. Um, I did like this one. It's sort of unfinished, which I like. Uh, this one I've had a long time. Um, this is the Carter House sampler. My husband's uh, brother and their 5,000 family members live in Tennessee. Uh, so I've had this a long time. I bought it when it first came out. I really do need to finish it. A Battle of Franklin Trust, the greatest story of the Civil War. And there's a whole story about it. And um, I don't know if I just have it in the DMC, have some DMC with it. Is that it? That's all they have? One, two, three, four, eight colors. And um, it's 197 by 203. It's not tiny, but it's not huge either. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So colors are a little... I'm not sure, even sure, but we'll see. As you can see, I've never 100% organized this. <laughs> From Homespun Sampler, this is the Ann Sims. Don't discount this sampler. I've seen it stitched. It is flipping amazing. Really beautiful. 
okay? So don't discount this sampler. It's really pretty. Sandra Sullivan's been out a long time. Um, this is I, I Wait for the Lord, and on him I put my hope. In him I put my hope. I don't like the color it's stitched on. Uh, I, it's just me. I thought this would be very pretty in red or blue. Really beautiful. In fact, this was a gift from K. Kerr from my stash. So I kept that with me. My oldest whip, my oldest whip um, is on Ada. And this one is traditional sampler kit. Um, this is three things there are that will never come back. And I have it 90% finished. It's big, especially on the Ada. Will I finish it? I have to. I just procrastinated this one. But you can see, uh, this was bought. It's her original, let's see, receipt still in here. This was bought from Shakespeare's Peddler. Shakespeare's Peddler on Etsy in 2010. This is back when she, apps, when she had a, uh, a store. That's Kitten Stitcher. And uh, I was living in a different house. <laughs> Here we have Mary Clayton, beautiful sampler. Nothing not to like about that one. Here we have Christina, Christina Weber's marking sampler. This is once again from Shakespeare's Peddler. I really like the open spaces. Not a lot of colors. This is great for travel. And, uh, this one's done on splotchy linen, but it's got to be like a, a splotchy linen like I did, like that sampler up there where it's a coffee dyed thing. Um, it's only, on 40 count, it's only 12 by 9. It's a small one. Jane Allen by Hello by Liz Matthews. Really pretty. Okay. Not sure when I'll get to this one. This one is uh, Innocence by Cross Stitch Antiques, an absolutely gorgeous sampler. Her charts are magnificent. Just real nice, beautiful paper, easy to read usually includes a picture of the original. The photography is fantastic. La Dee Da, Little Annie Lewis. Beautiful. Not sure, I have a lot of these black kind of samplers. This one's got a lot going on on it. Very pretty. I'm not sure if I'll get to it. GGR. This is Needlework Practice by a schoolgirl. Fell in love with it. Hard to find, but you can actually email her and she will send it to you. She'll sell it to you. Love the open spaces on this one. Um, 329 by 309, but that, uh, don't get scared because it's not a lot of stitching. Another Kathleen Littleton one, um, In Memory Of. Fantastic, right? Fantastic. Uh, not very big. Or bigger than you think. 142 by 153 is not huge. Just a beautiful sampler. Uh, this is Lucy Barber. Another one I don't know if I'll get, get to. And uh, I have the, the original, the um, scissor fob it came with. So I might, if I sell this, it'll be sold with the scissor fob. Um, I love this because of the oranges. That's why I bought it. Do you see the orange tree? Like oranges, it reminds me of an orange tree, very Florida. 
will I ever get to it is a big question. Um, I love, yeah, really pretty. Um, this is an oldie but a goodie by Homespun Sampler. Once again, another unfinished sampler. I love that. I love unfinished samplers. Not very big either. Um, this is old, 1984. And on, it's 240 by 258, but certainly not a big deal. And um, I actually kitted this up. I thought these are pretty soft colors. And I kitted this up, I did a uh, conversion on this one. It's gonna end, I promise. Um, this is Mary Ramage. Okay. And this one is Hannah Three Cucks with the, uh, this one came and it smelled like smoke, so I had put a uh, fabric softener sheet in here and it actually did work. I was very upset. But, uh, and oh, that one's got an issue still, so. And then I have by Reflets de Soe, Genevieve Barbeau. And I have the silk, and this must be the call for silk came in one of her I think I might sell this one because I don't know if I'll get to it although it's got some real pretty um, motifs and uh, and colors look at the spring colors on that one threads of gold this is uh, Jeanette Duncan Gosman that's a second copy so I'm gonna get rid of that oh my god how do I have a second copy this is another scarlet letter memento mori not for the faint of heart, okay? And uh, the reason is, this does have, I've never opened this, but it does have specialty stitches and a lot of solid stitching, but it's fabulous. Stitches used are cross, petite point, queen, eyelet, long arm cross, and bargello, and flame stitch. Very pretty. Here's the infamous Hannah Wilson. And I'm not going to say why it's infamous, but um, I love Needlework Press. She's amazing. It's my only sampler that looks like this. This is a kit. This is Hannah Barnett. Fabulous. Okay. And uh, this fabric, I had sort of was, didn't look wasn't yellow but it is very very pretty this is fox and rabbit baked clay might be too dark for the sampler I don't know that can be fixed I have that can be easily remedied it's not a small sampler either will this ever end no Okay, this is Florence Mary Dickerson, limited edition, and I have everything it, that came with it. And I might sell this one because I think it's just never going to get to it, even though it's, it's amazing. Um, I don't remember what I paid for it. I'd probably just sell it what I paid for it. And if it's truly a limited edition, it probably doesn't exist. It probably isn't available anymore. I don't know. Okay. This is uh, 2023 Queen of the May. Uh, this is Maria Ewan. I super like this one. I thought the border was just fabulous. And then... I'm going to restart this. This is the first Noel. I had once started this, but I wasn't crazy about the fabric. Uh, this is by the E-Sampler. Just amazing. And this is a whip. 
Um, this is Mary uh, Ann Bailey. It's it's beautiful. And that I have barely started, but I started it. Okay. And this is not, that doesn't belong in there. Okay, I have a few more. Yeah. Oh. I watch these guys called Sushi Mango, and they're hilarious. They're three guys basically dressed up. They're from Australia, but they seem to be of Italian descent, okay? They dress up as either Italian grandmas or Italian grandpas, and they have these videos. And uh, one of the videos is they were watching a TikTok video of some girl that was actually baking a lasagna or cooking it in a dishwasher. Weird stuff exists like that. So the expressions on their face was, oh God, no. And one of them says, call the priest. It was so funny. They were hilarious. They, I, I showed, I actually showed one on the cross, on our page. Uh, they had a Stanley cup that the grandchild gave them. And uh, he comes in and uh, he's like, oh, you're using it. And it turns out there was something in it. She put her sewing supplies in there. And then, then he comes back another time and she's using it for olives. And it, another time, it, she's just using it for everything. But, but um, they're very hilarious. They're called Sushi Mango. S-O-O-S-H-I Mango. Out of Australia. I don't have a ton more. This is just a small amount. Eliza Martha Winfoot. I will not get to this. It has Legacy Winning night Nightingale with it. It has all the silks. Um, this was an exclusive from the attic. And I will never get to it, so I'm actually going to sell that as well. I said, well. I said in my Save Money video, do not be afraid to de-stash. And I have to. This is Threads of Gold Christmas Sampler 3, a very small sampler. Um, I have it kitted up. It also has a few beads on it. So this is a Christmas sampler. I have it kitted up. Um, and this, that, you know, I will get to all of these. Well, some of them I will. And then we have, this is Milady's Hoarding Conundrum, and it comes with floss and uh, fabric. And this was from the History Club. I might sell this one. Not that I don't like it. It's just that I'll never get to it, and I have samplers just like it. Um, this is Reflets de Soe Leontine Breton I love this sampler and I love the way it's packaged look at that um on my to-do list this is probably one of the first sampler kits I've ever uh, had uh, this is samplers revisited Scottish reproductive reproduction reproductive reproduction tangent for a second how on earth was my last video about abortion? I just don't know. I got two different abortion comments, both deleted. Weird, huh? Let's go back. Um, anyway, Scottish Reproduction Sampler. Look at the colors. Look at the sampler. What's not to like? Um, MPI, and I don't know what this fabric looks like, lakeside fabric to me. Um, I think it is. I think this has got to be a uh, half yard of it. It's like, this is lakeside, I'm sure. And I don't recall the name, but I know it's lakeside linen. Oh, um, maritime white, which of course is not white. I don't know what count this is. I want to do this one on 40 count. I have all the MPIs. I think I'm gonna, when I put these back, they're gonna be in an order of uh, whatever I'm gonna do. This one I've been dying to do a long time. This is Ann Thompson, a round sampler. 
I've got all the DMC in here. And a piece of her, this is the, uh, the Scarlet Letter actual, actual linen, which I really love. Um, depending on the count, I'm probably going to do it. This, this is just, this is the Betsy Cotton Sampler. This is a travel sampler. Came as a kit because it's miniature. Just an itty bitty little one. Um, this is a kit that I did uh, get from uh, Cross Stitch Antiques. This is the Elizabeth Martin Irish Sampler. Okay. And she sent this to me, all kitted up from her website. And uh, curious, I don't know what fabric this is. I like the color of it. It's sort of looks like lakeside buttercream. Probably that's what it is, lakeside buttercream. Um, definitely a high count. I'll have to iron this before I use it, but it's beautiful. And this is just happens to be a beautiful sampler. It's got a very swallow with it. It's probably a 45 count, something like that. Just look at the colors. This is a sampler that's from Long Island, which is where I was born and grew up. Elizabeth Co. This is the only Long Island sampler I have, so it has to be done. And um, I'm not sure what part of Long Island it's from, but it's Long Island sampler. Sampler was purchased from an estate auction in Connecticut. There's an early sticker on the back side that says sampler from Long Island, New York. So they don't really know, okay? So 100%, but apparently it's supposedly a Long Island sampler and it's beautiful, I've seen it done. I don't have fabric, but I do have the, the beautiful flosses. I think from now on, I'm not really gonna, well, it's nice to have the fabric with some of them, but I do change occasionally. Um, this sampler is magnificent as well. I had to special order fabric for it. This is AR 1879. Okay, I'm planning on doing this one on its side. I did one like that and uh, it's just easier to manage. And you can do it, it comes out fine. Um, a lot of beautiful motifs. It only has three colors. And this was worked on a special cut of 40 count Chantilly cream, which I was able to purchase. What is this? So this is the Chantilly cream. Um, look how big it is. Uh, yeah. Um, I questioned how big this sampler was. Uh, I didn't realize it was this big, but let's see. The stitch area is 227 by 757, but there's a tremendous amount of open space. Like, tremendous. Look, look at the chart. So I'm not too concerned about stitching it. It just, this was one that the fabric had to be right because there's so much fabric. And... So much open space that apparently one skein was all two skeins of three, two skeins of red, of red. So two two skeins of red, two skeins of blue, and one skein of the yellow is all you needed. So it, it's not that bad. And this is forty count Chantilly lace. I bought that from Traditional Stitches because they were the only ones who had it at the time. Okay. This could be a travel. Depends where I'm traveling, but it could be. And then this one, um, I can't sell because it was a PDF and I'm not going to do it. The checkerboard house, I just printed it. But it was a PDF, which I printed in my house. Okay. And um, I can't absolutely uh, can't sell it. I'm never going to do it. Um, 
I don't know what the, uh, I have some buttercream from Dixie, uh, Dixie Sampler. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Um, I have to ask Nicola that I bought it if I'm allowed to at least gift it to somebody. Because uh, if I didn't stitch it at all, um, I'm going to ask her permission to do that. Um, if I stitched it, I would have destroyed it. Um, this is Rebecca Robinson. Really cool looking sampler. And uh, that is the linen from the Scarlet Letter. And uh, how big is the sampler? I don't know. Uh, it says here, the reproduction will measure 16 by 22 on the uh, 30 count linen. But I don't know if that's the uh, 30 count. Okay. And then um, Mary Brown, the beloved Mary Brown. Now I'll tell you something interesting. This is another one of the first ones I bought from Hands Across the Sea. And she used to sell... Uh, the, she used to sell, uh, sell stuff for it. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I didn't get this from Hands Across the Sea. Maybe I did, but it came in a little pouch and there's beautiful little, uh, but at one point she was kidding up stuff. Um, this is just such a pretty sampler. Uh, how do you not like it? Look at it. It's beautiful. And uh, on 40 count, it's going to be uh, 11 by 14. I saw this one hanging on the wall at the attic, too. Okay, I only have a few more things. Oh, how am I going to get these over here? Um, this, came, this is uh, Eliza. Leconte, and this is by Kathy Barrick, and it came kitted at a retreat. Uh, I may not do it. It's awfully pretty, but I don't know. Um, this is the Golden Sampler, also from that retreat. Um, it came out so pretty, it was very beautiful. I don't know if I'll do it. Um, I saw these, these models, they were magnificent. This is another one from the same uh, retreat. This is Golden Sampler. Just really beautiful. Okay. This is Souvenir de Pension. This is a darning sampler. Reflects the SOE. Okay. This is Lucy Moore. I've seen many people do this. It's really pretty. By Needlework Press. Her charts are really good too. Like very nicely made. Just very pretty. And uh, this is 345 by 110. So it's sort of long and skinny. Um, I don't know what that to do in here. This is Most Humble Hands by Teresa Vinay, and there's a bunch of small samplers in here. Um, really nice ones. The one that I really liked was Elizabeth Franz. I'm not going to show you the whole book. We're running out of time. Okay. Another sampler book. Another bargain. I'm almost done. Let's see, this is also a uh, hello from Liz Matthews, and this, um, oh, this was also some stuff that came with the uh, sam one of the samplers. Let's see what's in this box. This is uh, Stacy Nash, uh, Maria Higginson, and this came in four pieces, okay? All right. I don't have a picture of all the pieces, but you'd have to put them together. But you get the idea. And um, I'm not going to do this. It came with beautiful linen. Beautiful. This looks like Havana. And it came with a lot of colors. This is actually going to be sold. 
Um, I gotta think about what I paid. Oh, there's a sales receipt in here. But I don't know if the sales receipt goes with the with the kit. This is some limited edition kind of kit. And it came with I was, you know, one of these uh, waxers. I don't know what else is in here, but I'm not going to do it. It's, it's just, the house is too big. Um, I'm just never going to get to it. So that's actually going to be in my sale. I'm going to have a sale today. <laughs> so look for it. Um, this is from Hobby House Needleworks. Uh, this is Rosa at a Featherstone. I'm not going to get to it, so I'm going to sell this one as well. Okay. But I have the complete kit. And there's just two more. Um, this is uh, Ann Rathmel, which I do have with, I don't, I believe there's one floss missing, but almost all the floss. This one I will do because it's magnificent. And one more is the limited exclusive reproduction from Needle in the Haystack. And this is Sarah Rinder, which of course I will do because I just love the bird bath. Okay. Um, and of course this is Mary Napier, and this was a kit. This was a uh, a sampler from um, Bridget Tolman, and it was the uh, Threads of History Club kit. And uh, it's good when they put a receipt in here because then I know what I paid. Because I don't want to overcharge, nor do I want to undercharge by a lot. Although most of the time. It's going to be less. I need your help. I need you to help me break this addiction, this sampler buying addiction. Um, I just went through a few of them and I took some out that I'm not going to do. I probably need to think about what I'm really going to do, what I'm not going to do, but I'm never buying another one again. No, nada. I am uh, involved in this club, so these club kits are really easy to uh, pass on. Uh, so if there's anything spectacular, I will, I will let you know. Um, so you guys can help me. Tell me what you think I should get rid of, what you think I'll do. If you have to have something of mine, contact me. And as usual, there will be a giveaway associated with this, with this video. And uh, you have to be a member of the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche group uh, to enter. So you have to go to uh, Facebook and find us. Uh, I don't know what the deal is with links on, um, I don't know, somebody posted you can't put links. I did not have a link when they posted that. But somebody posted you can't have links. So uh, I just find me. Just look, look me up. And um, I hope you have a great week. Tomorrow is Easter, blessed Easter. He has risen. He had risen. He will rise again. One can only hope. And um, be well. Thank you for watching with me. Adios.